Thank you all for being here today. My name is Parfait Gasana. I'm a data analyst at Winston and Strong LLP in Chicago, Illinois. And for this virtual user 2020 talk, I'll be presenting on Postgres SQL as a data science database. And just to get started here real quick, many people are well aware of the challenges that um, associated in the data science space, um, both if it's specifically in our environment or generally across many uh, um, in the, in the industry. Um, just by orders of sheer magnitude, um, big data, um, volume, variety, velocity, and the veracity of data is a big challenge. Um, there's a challenge of data munging and wrangling. Many, um, we hear a lot of anecdotes of 60-80% of, of analyst time is just uh, um, getting data into a nice manageable format for the end use needs. Documentation is a big challenge. Um, keeping track of code books, um, data dictionaries, and all the auxiliary files that are associated with the data, the metadata essentially. Uh, um, keeping track of that for citation and annotation needs is, is, is a big challenge. And there's reproducibility, being able to replicate both peers and coworkers' um, solutions uh, and confirm results, very critical in the scientific method. And then there's hardware resources, um, simply owing to the big data challenge as well as the, the, the data intensity of, of data science um, algorithms, modeling, and, and reporting needs. And here is where I believe a relational database can help with some of these challenges. Certainly it's not the end all be all solution, but it can really um, ameliorate some of these hurdles. Um, relational databases has historically been used for desktop and web applications, but I, I believe that they really do have a place um, specifically and dedicated for data science um, and, and even data analytics teams. Relational databases primarily objective is data persistence, um, storing data both from historical to real time. Um, and, and it's an added infrastructure uh, um, you know, setup that brings durability and security. And, and, and you can rest assured of data loss is, is very minimal to none. Uh, um, so, you know, it has replication and backup set up um, with it. Storage efficiency, you store um, less on disk using the relational um, and entity model um, rather than uh, a lot of the redundancy as seen in CSVs, um, text files, or even the spreadsheets. And then the centralization, now you foster a multiple user environment where your team can all be set up on one centralized platform um, for accessible um, needs. You no longer have to zip or, or, or email or, or point to different network file system shares, cloud uh, um, access points for data or, or, or all the metadata that are associated. Everything is, resides in, in one central um, location and for remote and local access. And the scalability, you no longer are beholden or limited to your client's machine. You can now leverage a back-end server database um, solution. And while there's many relational databases essentially out there, both for commercial and, and open source uh, um, um, environments, I believe um, Postgres SQL is the best, most optimal. Uh, um, that it works great in our environment. Both are both open source tools. Both are extendable tools. Um, Postgres SQL, you know, is, a, is, a, is the advanced level object oriented relational database um, system. You can, you can do very sophisticated um, solutions, set your own types, and they all work great I mean, seamlessly in R. And, and you can even run R in Postgres um, for stored functions. And so there's even more adaptability and that could be very conducive for um, data scientists. And so um, to showcase and really show, show the power of, of Postgres as a back end to an R environment, I set up a, a, an environment database um, um, last year. Really, the central objective was to study the human impact on global and local um, biosphere and climate. And this is being physical and natural environment. And this is this actual database um, is available as a Docker container um, on my Docker Hub. And this is this link in the upper right corner is access to that. And this database is pretty comprehensive. It, it, it covers multiple domains, demographics, um, economics, um, biology, both um, um, animal and plant species list. Um, you got land, arable land, to national um, sea and um, snow and ice data centers, Arctic and Antarctica sea ice data, NOAA's ocean data, and atmospheric data from NASA. Really, um, all these um, metrics um, and, and see how they all interplay together um, on the premise of human population and, 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 and activity via GDP. So, 
um, with that with that in, in mind, you know, the first, you know, you know, as you know, in the pipeline for a database connection is essentially connected to that backend. And um, one great aspect of R and Postgres is that there's multiple ways of connecting, um, so you're not really, you know, forced into one uh, um, standard or or one package. Um, you can connect in a traditional ODBC. It's a very popular industry on uh, database technology. Other database connection um, originally was developed by Microsoft, but adopted across the industry. And um, you can do that with the ODBC package that runs off of the DBI um, family of, of database um, solutions in R. Um, download the Postgres um, driver beforehand, um, and, and and then the essentially point your, your, your server database and all your credentials uh, for the access. Another um, um, mode is JDBC, Java Database um, Connector. Um, you download that in advance and use it as the middle layer between R, the client, and Postgres, the server. Um, and, and this also, you know, can be, and one great thing, Postgres does a great job in keeping up to date with all their versions and even the standards, JDBC and ODBC standards. So you can rest assured that th these are very sound and, and well-maintained solutions. And then um, you can just do a direct connector without a middle layer with R, the R Postgres SQL API, another DBI um, family of, of, of packages. Um, for database connection and you just point all your credentials and then um, you expose a connection for query needs. So once you get um, your, your, your setup um, um, you know, across your various um, environments, is, is it now interact with the data. One great um, aspect of using Postgres SQL is that you, you really can start today uh, uh, migrating your data. Um, once you set up the schema um, for uh, this is an example with the global temperature data from NASA, you can then point you can then migrate your data directly from CSV. So what you're already using in R, you can um, use, you use those same source files um, um, to populate your, your, your tables, um, add here, of course, to the data types. And so, and, and I wanna stress again, the, the usefulness of copy. Copy is a Postgres SQL command. That's part of the SQL language. Um, other databases requires a separate executable utility just to get data into that database. But you, you, can, you, don't know, you don't need to jump across different softwares just to get data into your, 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 need, your, your, your database. So Postgres does a great, uh, 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 has a great facility in, in that aspect, the very bulk, fast uh, um, um, load reader. Documentation, um, um, Postgres has a comments um, uh, feature, both at the table as well as the column level. And for this, you can, this will help in doc the documentation challenge of annotating the, the original organization that is, you know, and then their um, corresponding URLs where the data derived. And guess what, it's queryable. You can, this query outputs all of the comments from all 21 tables, pointing to their um, sources as well, and the URL. So, so if you need it for everyday future needs, you need a one-off request, you need to search for something, you no longer have to jump to those metadata files and, and, and navigate through file systems. Everything is, is sits with the data. So it moves with the data. And so you no longer have to worry about uh, um, all that metadata tr you know, challenge uh, tracking those files. Everything is, is, is set up in one central um, no, um, access point. And then data analysis is, is really the next step. Once you have your, your connection, your, your, your schema, and, and populated data, you can now start using your data. Um, one great aspect of using a backend uh, um, database engine is that you have the a um, access to SQL. SQL is a special purpose declarative language. It's been adopted by the relational database industry. Uh, um, and, and, and Postgres is, is, is keeps true to the standard. And, and as you can see, it's a very compact statement that does a lot under the scenes. Uh -huh. um, here we're joining three different data sources and then, and then um, running aggregations on them. And the counterpart in R for this single aggregation solution is to, is to import three different data frames and then run a chain or iterative merge and then run multiple aggregation, possibly also in a chain, um, just to get that um, year level and, and month analysis. But, Unfortunately, you know, with, with SQL, it's one compact statement to get a, a nice um, t um, data frame table. Uh, or you can stay at the granular level um, without aggregation. And here is just um, tracking time or date and month across those same metrics, carbon, PPM by month, U.S. Consum energy consumption, and the U.S. CO2 emissions. 
And then I leave R to do that final step of the data visualization, specifically a time series plot of those three metrics together across time from 1970s to the 2010s. So if you, if you saw what I just did, I, I left um, Postgres to do the data, the heavy lifting uh, of the data, and then just have R do the analytical um, solution. Well, R, and, and both are really working in their specializations. And so that, that's one great aspect of, of, the, of connecting these two um, tools together. This is yet another example of a simple aggregation, this time renewable energy, production and consumption. So you can change your plotting needs um, accordingly. This is now gonna run an iterative, um, faceted type of, of time series, sliced and diced by their energy type, biofuel, geothermal, hydroelectric, solar, waste, wind, and wood energy, total biomass and total um, renewable energy. Across, again, production and consumption across time. 1970s through the 2010s and get more sophisticated. Um, this is now a dual aggregation using a common table expression where we're running two different aggregations and then joining them together. This uh, is US primary energy consumption by the decade and sector um, and, and likewise um, US CO2 emissions by decade and sector and then join them together, um, get a nice um, imported data frame and then um, can render the final um, um, solution um, uh, of where our works best. U.S. primary energy consumption by sector, 1940s to 2010s, commercial electric power, industrial, residential, and transportation sectors, and then um, similarly for us, U.S. CO2 emissions. So as you can see, you can be very sophisticated, still working, you know, in, in tandem with a back-end um, um, resource. Parameterized queries are very popular industry um, process of sending uh, um, data from the, the client R into a backend for a more dynamic data um, setup. There's a prepare statement where I pass literals, transportation, residential, commercial sector, param parameters to, 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 to render a nice long data frame, a more dynamic solution rather than repetitively rewriting the same SQL. Uh, uh, um, and so with that, you're able to get a nice data frame uh, for your plotting needs. Here's a, again, another faceted group uh, bar plot by the sector, US CO2 emissions, 1970s to 2010. But this time it, it, plot, it, it, it plots fuel types and see how they compare over time with, amongst each other. Then databases can make, um, help you broaden your lens so for a more comprehensive coverage. Um, and this time we're running multiple, up to seven, still in one compact statement using a common table expression. This is now pairing human population with many other metrics. Um, um, that associated in the database, all joined together um, by year. And then we're able then to render a scatter plot of pop world population across all the other global metrics. World population of um, arable land, world population animal calendar, IUCN's red list um, threat level data, um, human population and plant counts on the Botanical Gardens International Plant Assessments List, human population Arctic sea ice and Antarctica sea ice from um, the National Sea and Ice Data Center. Uh, and the NOAA's ocean data, total carbon dioxide and, and pH scale, trying to measure the acidification of oceans, and then um, um, global temperature um, from NASA, and trying to see if there's any discernible patterns, both positively or negatively, that's associated with human population. And naturally, we do see that, as literature um, suggests. Um, and then one great aspect is that you can seamlessly move solutions. You can run a, a shiny um, um, solution simply with your data, uh, uh, with your database. Um, so, so you can really um, set up very sophisticated analytical solution and, and move seamlessly across with a, a backend database, running the same query, same, same setup. You no longer have to drag all those um, files, data files or metadata. Everything's intact in one. And then you can even work in other environments like Python um, with this Flask um, application um, really powered by the same backend database. So, so you can really uh, leverage and, and really expand your, your whole solution if you really use Postgres as a, as a tool in your pipeline. Very robust big data solution, facilitates access and data management. You leverage a query engine with the power of uh, and, and expressiveness of SQL. You support reproducible process overall, right? You're keeping things intact uh, uh, and, rep and, and, and for replication and reproducibility. And then overall with Postgres and, and, and in R, you really are working in a very streamlined open source ecosystem. And then even set up with a Docker 
um, containers. So I hope I was able to demonstrate and really advocate for many um, to, to move into a relational database solution. Thank you so much for your time.